Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Creating a Multiplayer Game Server series. My name is Bryson Henry, and I will be your host on this journey. So today we'll be talking about a particular topic that is really important for us as we're creating this multiplayer game server. That will be the client server connections and what that means and how that works. So let's break down, first of all, what is the client and what is the server? So for us, our client will be our Unity 3D game application as that will be our multiplayer game and our server will be our multiplayer game server which will be a node server that will be running in Red Hat OpenShift. So let's jump into this client server communication conversation. So today we'll be talking about two different I guess you could say approaches or models of client server communication. One will be a non-persistent client server communication model and one will be a persistent client server communication model. So as we're making our multiplayer game and our multiplayer game server it's going to really be important for us to know the difference between these two because we're only going to be able to use one of them and that's going to be the persistent communication model because that's the only one that's going to work for us as a multiplayer game. So why is that the case? So let's break down what a non-persistent communication model is first. I think a really good illustration that kind of parallels what a non-persistent communication model looks like is trying to send a letter to somebody and receiving a response. So in our case, let's say we're trying to send a letter to our bank. We need some information about our account and we want to know kind of what's going on with our account balance or some other information. So what would happen is that we would say, write some type of letter to our bank requesting some type of information. We'd put it in our mailbox and our bank would receive it. Our bank would look at this and say, oh, okay, they're asking for some information about their account, their account balance, so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and make a response. They'd write their letter, they'd put it in the mailbox and they'd send it back to us. And one day we'd receive that response. Once we received a response from the bank, our communication with the bank ends there, right? We send them a letter, they gave us back our response and hey, we're good. Similarly, when you're working with applications that use the non-persistent connection model, it works just like that. So imagine now you wanted to actually log in onto your uh, local bank's website and actually check out your account information. So what you would do is you go to your browser. In this case, our browser will be our client and we type in our website, which would be like www.mybank.com. So what happens once we put in that address, we go ahead and press go in our web browser or on our client. And what would happen is we'd send a request to our bank's server. Our bank server would then receive our request and go, hey, okay, I have the information you're looking for, which is our main website, our main web page, and I'm gonna send that response back to you and send it back to your browser. Our browser would receive that response and guess what would happen? A beautiful web page would show up in our browser. And that's essentially the end of the conversation that we were gonna have with our bank application. So basically in a non-persistent communication model, it's basically one request, one response, and our communication is done. So as you can probably surmise just from that example, this doesn't really work very well in a multiplayer game type of situation. Because in a multiplayer game, we're gonna really want to always know what's going on with all the players all the time. We don't just want to know about the state of a player once and then the communication is done. We wanna know continuously what's happening, what's going on in the game, where is the player, what are they doing, and how do we you know, interact with them in a real time situation. So that's where the persistent client communication model comes in because it solves that problem. So I think a great parallel for a persistent client to server communication model is a telephone call. So just think about the normal telephone call that you might make to anybody, to even to your bank or to one of your friends. Once you make that call, it rings and the other person picks up, you guys are now continuously connected in a conversation from that point on. Essentially, you know, as long as the two people are connected on that phone call, they're always listening for another person to say something or responding or talking back and forth. And that conversation and that communication continues on and on and on. Similarly, in a client to server model that uses that persistent connection, it's the same way. The conversation goes on and on and never ends until somebody disconnects. So a great example of a particular type of web application that uses a persistent model is a chat room. Essentially, the persistent connection is always listening for information, right? Always sending information back and forth, back and forth from the client, which would be the chat room in that web browser, into the server, which is gonna manage that chat room. So once again, going back to what our goal is, is making a multiplayer game server, that's what we want. We always want a continuous conversation between the game, which is Unity, and the server that's running in Red Hat OpenShift. In our case, when we're gonna be creating our persistent client to server model, we'll be using what's called WebSocket. WebSocket is a standardized and very commonly used protocol for managing persistent communication applications. In our case, Unity 3D and our server that'll be running in Red Hat OpenShift will be using WebSocket to communicate with 
each other. And that's just basically it. At the end of the day, we're gonna be wanting to use a persistent communication model in order to communicate between our game in Unity 3D, our client, and our server, which will be running in Red Hat OpenShift. So thank you so much for checking out this quick video. And in our next video, we're gonna be talking more about WebSocket and how to be used in creating our multiplayer game server. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and I look forward to seeing you guys again in this creating a multiplayer game server series. Y'all take it easy, and until next time, peace.